Um, good afternoon. Uh, see, in the last class, we were doing problem of block on slope. Uh, and uh, it was an interesting problem. Uh, before that, also we solved one problem uh, where we have a cylinder on slope instead of a block. So that problem is uh, uh, chosen uh, for uh, teaching you is uh, especially uh, to understand importantly uh, three force equilibrium concept. Right. So when you have a free body diagram, three forces are there that should essentially be a concurrent or parallel force system. So we could see that in that example uh, that should that should uh, constitute a parallel force system. So that's what we have seen in that. Also, we looked at uh, uh, when we have a cylinder on slope and it has to be under rest condition or impending to start its motion or rolling condition. What are the necessary direction of friction force? So this is all what we have um, um, seen in that problem. And then the second problem in the last period we did was uh, uh, block on slope uh, where the slope angle is greater than angle of repose. So the uh, block which is just kept on the slope would uh, uh, accelerate down, uh, will move down. But uh, we need to ensure that uh, you know, uh, it should be under static equilibrium on that slope. So there should be an external force P should act on the block. So when that is acting, uh, then uh, uh, it is uh, just preventing it sliding down. Or if you increase the magnitude of force P, that can make the block to move up also. So you uh, understood that there can be a range of value of P under uh, 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 for in that range, a block can state, uh, stay in the slope under static equilibrium. So that's what uh, we concluded in the last uh, class problem. And one part we have done, uh, we will continue today's class with the second part solving and then we will <laughs> get into some interesting problem. So with that note, let me just share my um, Act Inspire board. Hope you are able to see this board. And uh, so this is the problem in the last class uh, we have uh, just uh, uh, seen. So a block which weighs W is on a slope theta, where this angle theta, where this angle theta is greater than theta r, which is angle of repose. So you require the force P should act and the direction of P is taken uh, 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 arbitrarily at an angle alpha to the slope and then we were uh, just started solving. So we did in the last class the case one where the block is just prevented moving down and we were drawn this nice free body diagram and this free body diagram is conveniently represented as a concurrent uh, uh, system of three forces. Uh, coming out of the concurrent point representing the uh, point mass of the block, uh, the entire mass of the block. And uh, we were able to get the expression of P uh, given by this uh, uh, Roman letter 1 equation. And then we were able to look at the three uh, particular cases can be derived uh, with respect to the direction of P acting on the block. So what should be the minimum value of P? what should be the uh, value of force P if that has to act horizontal direction or what should be the value of P if that has to be acting along the slope. So these are the three conditions that we have got it. <clears throat> so now today's class uh, let us continue with the same problem uh, with drawing the free body diagram just to uh, get the upper range of the value of P. So this is lecture number 23. And today it is 3, 4, 20, 21. And uh, let's continue with that problem. Where we have a slope theta and we have the block which weighs W. And this is acted upon by force P, which is acting at an angle alpha to the slope. Right, this is force P. <laughs> and uh, the free body diagram uh, I would draw now. So now this is what case two.
value of p uh, just to start the block motion up. That means impending up. Impending. So the tendency of the block is to move up. So you would have your friction force uh, would act in the opposite direction. So you would have your friction forces in this direction. And uh, since it is an impending state that we consider, so this value would be mu s times n. And you would have your normal force in this direction. Uh, let me take smaller one. So this is the end. And uh, you know this normal will have to the vertical angle theta. This angle is theta. Now uh, since uh, uh, I have WP and uh, if I combine these two, the reaction resultant R would be my third force. So I would uh, get that force now. This is R. And this R will have to the normal, the angle is 5s, right? So now uh, this is the free body diagram for the second state. So I can redraw this conveniently, looking at uh, um, the block mass as point mass at this point to represent now these forces. So the weight is going to act down. So the uh, tail is brought to this point. And uh, now what is the uh, direction of weight to the uh, normal? So see here, if I draw the normal, we draw this normal. So this direction would be same as this direction. So that angle is theta. So I would have here this angle theta, right? And uh, this is my convention X, Y uh, up, and this is now W, <clears throat> and the force P is acting in the direction where it is to the slope with an angle alpha, so this is the direction of P. Now what is the direction of R? So R would act, now see it is to the normal by phi angle, R to the vertical by theta plus phi angle. So what is that angle that I should write? So if I extend this line, if I would have extended my vertical line here, this is my vertical line. So now in this, R vector would act uh, like this. So this is my R vector. So this R vector will have this angle phi s, whereas this angle is what is theta. This angle is theta, right? <clears throat> so now I can uh, uh, apply Lamis theorem, apply. Lamis theorem. Applying Lamis theorem. Uh, I have now W by sine of angle included by other two vectors. So what is this? So the angle, entire angle for W is this angle. I should measure from here to here. So this entire angle. So this angle value would be now uh, how much it is so it is 90 minus alpha plus 5 right so what is that 90 or i can say it's 90 plus 5s minus alpha 90 plus 5s sine of angle 90 plus 5s so 90 plus 5s this right angle plus this angle minus this alpha would give me this angle included by R and P, so minus alpha. 
is what is this? So um, that would be equal to P by angle included by these two. So that angle is angle included by R and W. So this angle. So this angle is how much you now? It's 180 minus theta minus phi s. So sine of angle 180 minus of minus theta minus phi. So I will take minus out. So theta plus phi s. Right. Uh, so therefore I can get what is my value P is W sine 180 minus theta is sine 180 minus theta is sine theta itself sine theta plus phi s by <coughs> here I have Ninety plus so sine ninety plus this angle is so cos of angle so nine sine ninety plus theta is cos theta so I would have uh, uh, cos phi s phi s minus alpha right phi s minus alpha phi s minus alpha. So my expression now for P is W sine theta plus phi s by cos phi s minus alpha for case two that we have said. So let's call this equation as Roman letter two. So now again we have three cases here. Uh, one is for P to be P minimum. So what is the expression? So denominator should be one. So I would have W sine theta plus phi s. Then phi s minus alpha s should be equal to zero. So phi s is equal to alpha. The so friction angle should be same as that of the direction of force P to the slope. So this is the condition for P to be minimum and the minimum value is given by this expression. And second case for P to be horizontal, P horizontal. So what is the condition P to be horizontal? So alpha plus theta should be equal to zero, right? So here you have, uh, see here P to be horizontal, I should have alpha plus theta, that should be zero. So P to be horizontal, that is a condition. So I can put that here, alpha plus theta should be zero. So what is my alpha? Minus theta. So here I can substitute that is W sine theta plus phi s in numerator and in denominator alpha I will replace by minus theta. So that is going to be cos phi s plus theta or theta plus phi s. So sine by cos it is tan. So W tan theta plus phi s is what is the value of force P in case that force P applied should be horizontal, right? And you know, as usual, third case like in the previous problem we have seen for P to be along the slope, the condition is alpha should be zero. So if alpha is zero, then P along slope B equal to W sine theta plus phi s by <coughs> this alpha is zero means it's only cos phi. Yes. So this is my third expression. So like this you can have the expression derived. <coughs> so now uh, the collective answer is what? What is the 
range of value of p under which uh, you would have the equilibrium is maintained so you would have three cases again so combining case 1 and 2 cases 1 and 2 of last period and today's class what we discussed you would be able to have uh, on the value of p range of value of p range of values values of p should be like this so if it is happen to be p minimum that should be in this range so the upper range is what we have got now is w sine theta plus phi by this is what we have got it right for p to be minimum on that uh, other day what was that we had w sine theta minus phi so i would have uh, this as one answer or I can have P to be horizontal that we had. So upper value of that is W tan theta plus phi s, which we have got it today. And the last class we have got W tan theta minus phi s. So this is another uh, set of equation. If P to be along the slope, then the answer today we got is W sine theta plus phi s is the upper limit by cos phi s. And the lower limit value is W sine theta minus phi s by cos phi s, which we have derived in the last class. So this is my third answer. So like that you can have. So the problem what we have posted is a generic problem, p at an angle alpha to the slope given. So it can be very specific given, then you would have these expressions. Right? Any doubt in this? Any doubt? There are 25 students only present. Any doubts? No, sir. Yeah. So now uh, let's uh, look at an interesting application problem now. So you know now um, uh, let's look at uh, friction force on screws, right? Screw friction that we will see. What does that is going to be connected with the uh, uh, problem of block on slope? So that's an interesting aspect. That is why we are going to take uh, an aspect of friction force on screws, right? Frictional forces on screws, very important. I was telling at the beginning of this module, a uh, 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 um, mission element called the screw jack. So the screw jack is that mission tool which can be used to lift the heavy load and it can hold that heavy load at the lifted position. So you want to lower it again, you have to apply the force to lower it. So that is a, the important um, uh, mechanical tool is what is called a screw jack. You could see that screw jack is in our vehicle, passenger car vehicle that we have. So we can just lift the axle whenever you want to replace the tire wheel assembly of a, uh, emergency situation or any, any uh, tough time that you face it while driving, right? So in, in such cases, you see that uh, um, uh, screw is having contact with the, uh, the nut portion, where there is a screw uh, um, thread, the surface has got a contact with the other uh, mating element uh, surface contact. So that friction is very, very essential. If you do not have sufficient friction there, so that cannot get locked. So that is what is called a self-locking principle of a screw, screw jack. So I rise a load and it is self-locked. If I do not apply force to rise, then it will be 
uh, staying there. So I have to apply the load uh, force to raise the load as well as lower the load. So that is what is locking principle of the screw jack. So that let us understand it's interesting. Right. So let me draw a schematic uh, representation of a screw jack. Right. The screw jack would have essentially uh, a uh, center member called a screw. So that would have an upper platform. And you would see here. Screw comes like this. And this you would have threads. So the threads goes like this. This thread. Like this. You, you have studied in your uh, um, uh, machine drawing course or in workshop uh, or manufacturing process. This is about fasteners. So the screws are fasteners basically, right? So those screw fasteners uh, uh, are required for uh, making temporary joints. Not only that, that's all small screws. You can see the screws are, are quite useful in power transmission as well. You could have seen your UTM machine, right? <laughs> Where you do a tensile test of a specimen, mild steel specimen, strength of material lab. So you can see there, there are cross heads which are has to be uh, having a relative motion. So uh, a load has to be applied on the specimen. So the upper head should be uh, pulled uh, up. So what is that? When you apply the hydraulic pressure, the screw would transfer the load. So those are called the power screws. The thread profiles would be of square thread profile or acne thread profiles and so on that you have studied or you will be studying it if you are in the third semester, right? So. You see one such screw thread is what you would see in a screw jack, which are square threaded screws, so which I have drawn here. The dotted portion is the portion that goes on the other side of the uh, circular shaft. So now this will be uh, encaged in a nut. So that portion would be like this. That would be and I take a sectional view of this body where you would have this portion on a part of this portion would be of a nut that's called. So it will have a profile internally uh, thread profile, which would be mating with this surface like this. Right? And this body would have some thickness support. Uh, just to draw a schematic diagram, right? And uh, this is your screw jack. And I would uh, make a section here because it's a sectional view. So that you could see inside what is this screw, right? So now if I have here a heavy load, which is an axle load comes, that is uh, say in kilo Newton. So this can be lifted up. So you would have here a uh, slot in that you will have a lever. So this lever will be of length L. I can apply at this end a small effort P so that I can turn this and uh, this will be lifted up and uh, reverse the turn, then it will be lifted down. So the thread can be of a single strand, double strand, or triple strand like that. So here in the screw jacket is single strand thread, right? So you have to understand in this circular shaft, uh, uh, member, you have this thread forms are made, are essentially called a helix. So this is something helix. So uh, what do you mean by that? Uh, you see from the top, the circular shaft would be a circle. So you go around the circle with the uniform speed uh, and you actually move up that uh, form, whatever made is what is called a helix. 
So you can understand that very well if I open one thread form. That means if I have here and exactly the uh, one revolution, if I come back from here to this point. So if I open that, that would be in a um, uh, wedge form and that form would be like this. So if I take this length, correct? So I, I just exactly cut from this to this. So if you look at here in three dimensional, so here I'll have the section as square like this and that will be keep on going and then it will be reduced to like a wedge form. And then again next like that it will be. So that is what is the helix. So I unopen one thread and if you look at that unopened thread would have this like this. So it's in a wedge shape. And I joined this. So now in this, if you look at this is what is called lead. And this is what is equal to 2 pi r distance. What is this r is what is mean radius of this. So mean radius would be this small r. So 2 pi r is what when I unwound this thread, the length of the thread as it is flattened, that would be equal to 2 pi r. So that would be here and that height is what is called lead. So for one revolution, if I turn this screw one revolution, 360 degrees, then what would happen? This is uh, rising up so that uh, rise, axial rise is what is called a lead. And the lead will be equal to n times pitch, n into pitch. So what does pitch here? A pitch is an axial distance from one point of the thread to the adjacent point thread. So if I take this point and this is an adjacent thread point, corresponding point. So this distance is what is called pitch. So N here stands for number of strands. Number of strands. So what do you mean by number of strands? If it is single strand, then for one revolution, the lead will be equal to pitch. If it is double strand for one revolution, lead will be equal to two pitch. So if you want to have uh, uh, more axial displacement in one revolution, number of strands uh, are more. So that is how the forms are made on this. So you would uh, uh, wonder how this uh, screw thread forms can be made. That can be made on a tool called a lathe. Uh, so there are mechanism, indexing mechanisms. So you can uh, have a circular shaft wherein you can form. Um, this uh, kind of uh, thread forms, thread profiles. So one such uh, um, uh, screw uh, in the body internally have got a similar uh, grooves called an internal screw uh, portion called a nut. So this portion is called nut and this is screw. And this is a basic mechanical arrangement. When you rotate it can go up and come down. So this is a uh, conventional uh, uh, screw jack called. So this entire thing is called a screw jack. You can see nowadays hydraulic jacks are come. So the pressure will be more and then it will rise all. So that is all uh, uh, um, you can look at and uh, see how is it working for principle all. But uh, uh, today's context uh, I have chosen this problem so that you see now there is rising of this load whatever is there some W uh, kilonewton load here. He is nothing but having a block on a slope of angle theta, where this theta is called lead angle, given by tan inverse of lead by lead by 2 pi r of this thread. So I will get this angle. So now if I have a load and if I have to say this is uh, staying there, if I rotate this lever, the load is raised. Then this load is rising up this uh, um, slope. That is an equivalent mechanism what is happening here. And that is the interaction of the surface of the screw with the uh, surface of the nut contact. And that that is an equivalence. That is that's why uh, you should understand um, the <coughs> Uh, load on the slope or block on the slope problem is uh, mathematically useful for uh, to represent uh, uh, screw jack working principle, right? So here this is now weighing W, some kilonewton, and this would be raised by the force which is in a horizontal direction. So you know the expression for P to be raised. 
in last class uh, just now we have done that is going to be w tan theta plus phi s if p to be lowered then w tan theta minus phi s both the cases that we have seen so this is to rise to rise to lower lower the load so you know these expression we can readily use and you would be able to find p so what is this p is <coughs> equal to applying the force p in a tangential direction at this point in the circular shaft this p whatever that we have is equivalent to the force applied in tangential direction because the contacting surface is here so the mean radius from here at a distance we have this contacting surface so the friction force uh, whatever is acting and the force p applied uh, external and the load w all at this uh, one single helix if you look at the p whatever this expression is there that is the force at the periphery or the circumference of this mean radius position of the uh, screw <clears throat> so if we have that into this r capital p into this small r is what is the torque turning moment that is required to rise the load or the uh, uh, if i take the second case so this is to rise and this is to lower right so if i take that expression then that is the torque required to lower the load that's a, a meaning so this would be equated to small p into l so that i would be able to have what is the smallest effort that is sufficient to be given at the end of this lever and this is what is the screw jack problem where you see what you have learned a block on slope is quite evident is applied here and in that also it is very particular the rising of this load by turning this lever and the uh, um, screw is rotating because of the turning moment that comes and that turning moment is quantified by capital p into small r where capital p is this load uh, uh, to rise whatever the force p is applied on this block and that would be here so this is that problem any doubt in this if you have any doubt you can ask let us have some data and then solve the problem right so here the data for this problem you can take it is single strand uh, uh, thread right so single threaded screw jack that means uh, n is equal to 1 n is equal to 1 and uh, you have pitch value for this is given uh, uh, is 10 mm 10 mm and uh, the mu s surface contact is given by 0.15 mu s value and the load to be lifted w is uh, 30 kilo newton 30 kilo newton right so what should be the small force effort this is what is asked p uh, now you need to find out so here you are also given the length of this lever l is 600 mm so these are the given data of the screw jack you would be able to solve this for small p so you can draw free body diagram and you do otherwise in the last class we have uh, last period last slide that you have seen uh, what is that is this this right so this is what we have seen uh, where is it here so this is what we have seen to rise up and particularly p to be horizontal you require this is a formula so i just take the formula now and uh, use it here <clears throat> so that is here w tan theta plus phi s into r that's equal to small p into l so now substituting small p into 600 mm here and r is radius so radius is given Uh, uh radius also is given here so the mean diameter mean diameter is given this is 5 40 mm so r is 20 mm so take that 20 here and w is 30 kilo newton 
tan of angle theta plus phi s. So what is angle theta? Theta is lead angle. So I can find out that here now. So theta is tan inverse of lead. Lead is equal to n times pitch. Since it is n is equal to one, pitch is equal to this, that's 10 by 2 into pi into r 20. So this angle, if I work out, uh, what is that I get? <coughs> 10 divided by open bracket 2 into pi into 20 close bracket. That's 0 0.07957 something. So shift tan inverse answer is 4.55 degrees. 4.55 degrees. So this angle is lead angle is 4.55 degrees. So it's see very clear here. Now this is theta. So what is my phi s? It is tan inverse of mu s is given 0.15. So how much it is? Shift tan inverse of 0 0.15. Is 8.53, 8.53 degrees. So you see here, this is slope and this is your phi s. So since theta is less than phi s, uh, this is locking, right? Locking is ensured. So in case you have your lead angle is so greater than this phi s, that means what the block will slide on its own. So you, you turn the lever and raise the screw and it won't stay there holding the load. The moment you stop, then it will uh, unload and come down because of the load. Uh, it will, uh, the screw will come down and the axle will fall on the um, person attending the fault. So uh, that should be prevented. That's why screw jacks should have this locking principle. So though the screws are lubricated, that's why I say this is 0.15 mu s. But uh, the dimension of the screw is such that because the lead angle uh, depends on uh, one is that the pitch, another one is this. So the pitch and this will be taken care. So this angle is uh, smaller than this, right? right? So it will be locking there. So now let's put these angles here. So that is 4.55 plus 8.53. And if I work out for P, now what is that I get? So 30 kilonewton, this is in kilonewton, remember? And this is tan of, what is this angle sum? This plus 4.55 plus 8.53. So I have 13.08. Into 20 mm divided by 600 mm. So this mm mm goes and kilonewton I'll have this value. So what is that I get? Uh, this tan of this value angle multiplied by 30. So it's 6.97 into 20 divided by 600. So I get 0.232. Kilonewton. So it is small p. So the effort required to rise 30 kilonewton is not even a kilonewton, it's just 0.232 kilonewton. See, that's what is called a, a simple lifting machine. So you could derive a mechanical advantage there, right? So the load lifted by the effort required to rise the load ratio is what we call it as a mechanical advantage. So any doubt in this? So what is the torque required? Suppose it's asked, to, what do you do? What is the torque required? This is now uh, the effort required to rise, to rise the load. So now what is the uh, effort required to lower the load? You should work out again, P that's equal to 30 uh, tan, uh, what is the theta minus phi as you get, right? In that formula, so theta is, uh, 4.55 minus 8.32 into uh, 
same 20 by 600 by 600 so this is to lower so what is that value is going to be 4.55 minus 8.53 so determinus answer Is it um, phi minus theta or theta minus phi that we have in the formula? Can you just check what is that we derived? Theta, theta minus phi maybe. No, no, not maybe. Uh, you just look at last class, what does that we derived? Expression. So it is uh, horizontal uh, phi, theta minus phi only. W theta minus phi. So here I get the negative value. What is the meaning of negative value? That's a sense of that effort to be changed. That's the meaning. So I work out with this uh, uh, now uh, with this uh, the minus sign here uh, says that uh, the direction change. So one side torque is to rise, rise up. This is an opposite side. That's the meaning of that. So there's nothing to worry on that. So you get uh, uh, 4.55 minus 8.53. Shift tan inverse answer as something into 30 into 20 and divided by 600. <coughs> you get uh, what is the answer that you get? Mistake is there. In the effort required to rise is uh, uh, right for lowering it would be more or less effort. So less effort would be needed. Huh? Less effort or more effort required because I get more value uh, when I work out this. What is the value you get? Can you work out this? 30 kilo newton into what is the formula here? 30 kilo newton. Mm. This is right here. W tan theta minus phi into R. <coughs> so what is the torque uh, at the uh, screw? And that would be equal to P into L. That's correct. So now instead of added this, uh, you have to take the difference. I should take the difference, right? Uh, I should take the difference, so I should remove that minus sign. Just let me just check 8.53 minus 4.55. So, Katanima's answer 75.53. Okay. into 30 into 20 sorry it's showing more it's showing more effort 0.069 yeah, yeah 75 point i am not sure about the value though sir why you are not having calculator besides my no no sir, i am having 70. it but it seems to be wrong no no what is the value you get i just wanted the value what you have got I get 76, 75 point nine kilonewton. That's P. Right. So is that correct? Sir. Uh, yeah, obviously you require to unload because uh, already you have uh, uh, the effort to rise the load would be uh, called an effort, but to uh, uh, unload you should have more effort to be applied. Then only this uh, because it's locked, right? It is locked. So that is why you get this answer, right? So what does that earlier answer we had? A tan 13.08. 
Oh, I had to do tan of that. No, tan inverse. I some mistake I made it. Um, just a minute. Eh? Yes, sir. So, sir, you have assumed tan inverse. That is why it is seventy five. Yeah, yeah, it's tan of that angle, right? I'm sorry. So eight point five three minus four point five five. Sir, point zero six nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's correct. So this is not correct. So this tan of this angle I have to take. I have just to take an tan inverse. That's why. Uh, that's why uh, it's wrong. So twenty into 30 divided by 600. So it is uh, very less. But uh, because, uh, see, lowering should be smaller than rising, right? Because the uh, load is going against the gravity. So when it's lowering, that assist. So the p value here I get 0 0.0696 kilonewton. So it's simply uh, 69.6 newton. Whereas here it is uh, to rise 232 Newton, right? Required. So to rise, this is the load required. To lower, this is the load required. And this is to lower the load. And these are effort P. So if you are asked to get uh, uh, what is the turning moment, to multiply that with the, uh, what is the torque required to be? Separate the screw means that multiply this with R. Or at the um, liver end means multiply with the L. That's all. So this is that answer. Any doubt in this? I just made while calculating. Instead of tan of this angle to take, I have taken tan inverse. That's why yeah, I got some wrong answer, right? Yeah. Uh, any doubt in this? If you do not have any doubt in this, let me just to stop at this point to this period lecture and I can continue again, right? So let us uh, now um, stop recording. <clears throat>